Hey everyone, so here's another uh, review on a pretty interesting product. So this is a Hyperkin Nintendo Switch uh, two port controller adapter for Nintendo 64 controllers. Um, so yeah, I recently picked this up locally at a, a game store. So yeah, it looks, looks like a pretty cool adapter here. Um, yeah, and I, I like this style too. You can see uh, it's got, it kind of almost looks like a Nintendo 64 or like the cartridge will go back here and it even has like little vents and stuff on the back and then the two control ports and looking at it actually has a home and a minus button too so that's nice it gives you some uh, those options for uh, um, what do you call it controller <laughs> buttons which aren't on a regular Nintendo 64 controller so yeah let's go ahead and open this up use my trusty knife here Yeah, and this um, this adapter, I don't know. I guess they were worried about it being stolen because it was actually was locked, and so the cashier had to unlock it for me. Uh, whereas other stuff in the store wasn't locked. I mean, there there were some things that locked, but, but yeah, a lot of stuff isn't locked in that store. But I guess this is something that is popular enough that people want to steal, apparently. <laughs> Which. I don't really, I don't think it's good to steal in any situation, most any situation, so, yeah. Anyway, but yeah, you can, yeah, this packaging is quite tough as well, so, yeah, I definitely didn't want people to just open this and <laughs> run away with it. Yeah, get this all the way open here. Get out of here. All right. Yeah, I'm really interested to see what the performance on this device is because, yeah, um, the original Nintendo 64 controller is quite sensitive and you can do a lot with it. And yeah, I, I'm interested to see if this can capture the full analog wonder of the original Nintendo 64 controller. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Yeah, just a uh, yeah, nice little. Yeah, nice design here. Yeah, it feels feels pretty sturdy. It's not like super heavy, but uh, it doesn't feel like it's necessarily going to break either. Looks like there's a switch here on the back where you can switch between either PC or console mode, so that's cool. So you can plug it into your computer as well if you want. Yeah, it looks like back here it's just saying what it's compatible with, compatible with standard 1064 controllers. So, yeah. All right, great. Well, yeah, let's say. Uh, Let's go ahead and try plug it in and see how it performs. Okay, there we go. So, yeah, grab some supplies. I'll try to link, leave uh, links for uh, most of this stuff that I can find on the description so you can get this set up. But yeah, I have this little stand, which is convenient for yeah playing the Switch in portable mode. Um, I guess I could have used the... Well, what I like about this stand is... I could use the the switch stand, but I like about what I like about this one is it shows the port easily, so though, yeah, it's easy to plug stuff into the USB-C port on the bottom here. Um, yeah. And then I have a USB-C to USB-A adapter. Uh, this is just kind of a generic one, which actually still works pretty good, but um, I also have this really high-quality uh, Anchor one, which, uh, yeah... <laughs> But this one was a bit more expensive. Um, but yeah, I mean, th th this one works just fine though too. So we'll just use this one. I, I'll just use it mostly because it's it's a little longer, and then also it's uh, a clean, like it's clearly a different color. So then it's easy to tell that I'm using an adapter in the video. Um, so anyway, let's go ahead and just turn on the switch first, I guess. Let's see here. Let's uh, yeah, I guess let's go to the controllers just see what happens when we first plug in this adapter. So, all right, so I'm just gonna plug this in. Let's see, I assume that probably nothing will happen right now. Yeah, it doesn't seem like anything happened. Okay, so now uh, I've got a few different Nintendo 64 controls we'll be trying here. So, uh, oh, well, oh, <laughs> it's because I accidentally hit a button on this Pro Controller. Uh, so yeah, we're also gonna be doing the Pro Controller test. <laughs> we'll be testing on the Nintendo 64 uh, Switch Online app. Um, but yeah, if you saw my other uh, review I did recently, uh, I have this really high quality techno game, uh, classic Nintendo 64 controller. Um, so yeah, we'll be using this. 
And then also I've got an original original Intel 64 controller, no mods done to it, so we'll be trying that as well. And then I also want to connect just wirelessly the Nintendo Switch on online controller just to see how that fares. And then we'll also be um, just comparing it against a regular Pro Controller. So, yeah. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, connect the Nintendo, Switch, Nintendo 64 controller first. So, so, yeah, this is the Techno Game controller. Very nice controller. All right, nice, nice connection there. That yeah, feels good. Okay, now so far nothing showed up, so let's see if I push a button. Okay, yeah, so it just shows up as a regular Pro Controller. Uh, instead of, like, this one we connected, you'll see it shows up as a 64 controller. Um, yeah, that's fine. It's okay to show up as a 60. Actually, I'll show, or as a Pro Controller, I'll show this one. Actually, we'll, we'll connect this one to a second player slot. Okay, so yeah, so that's the way the... Nintendo Switch on my controller shows up. Okay, so now we got two controllers. Now I'm going to connect the official Nintendo 64 controller, the original one. Just connect this to this other port. And then I assume we just push a button here. Yep, okay, there we go. Yeah, so, so far so good. And then for our last controller, we'll connect this Switch controller. Nice. Okay. Good deal. So now I'm going to mostly be using this uh, Techno Game controller. Let's see. Oh, I forgot. I, <laughs> if you saw my other video, I actually never uh, finished this shrine where I was kind of exploring the top there. So, well, yeah. So right now I'm, I'm just using, I guess this is okay because we'll use this controller to kind of, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you probably wouldn't usually use the Intel 64 controller in here, but yeah. But it obviously does work, so let's see. And I assume that these are just the C. Yeah, this is just the right stick. See, I can see it just controls the camera, which is expected. And then this is the D-pad, obviously. Yeah, D-pad stuff. And then, let's see, this would, I'm sure, be R. Yeah, I'm going to throw an item there. And this is ZL, looks like. Yep, yeah, so Z is ZL, and then this would be L, I'm sure. Yep, yeah, change the different attacks there. Um, yeah, so there's no uh, ZR button on here, which, um, let's see, starts, works, yeah, which I guess is okay because on the Nintendo Switch Online app, if you're using a Pro Controller, to go back to the game menu, you actually push minus, and there is a minus button on here, so I guess let's see how that works. Yeah, it seems like minus is working, and there's also a home button. Yep, that also worked. Nice. Cool. All right. Yeah, well, uh... Let's go ahead and I guess I'll talk to this thing because then I can actually save the shrine being beat. <laughs> I'll pause the video while I uh, uh, save this game and then we'll go into Intel uh, 64 game. Oh, and uh, this is just, this isn't really important, but yeah, my structure that I built, if you saw the other video, it looks like uh, it's disappeared when I went into this cutscene. So yeah, the statues took away my structure, unfortunately. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, let's go ahead and pause the video again and I'll go and save this. Okay, there we go. Save that. So now we'll actually go into a Nintendo 64 game on here, which is what I assume uh, most people would be using this for. Yeah, this is the Nintendo Switch OLED, by the way. Okay, well, it's. Uh, I usually like to start with testing Mario 64 to see how the sensitivity is for, like crawling around. Well, not crawling, but uh, tiptoeing, I mean. Hello. Oh, and this is also the rumble version, so that's good. So let's see if the rumble pack works. Uh, so far, I'm not feeling any rumble stuff. Oh, boy. Well, if the rumble doesn't work, that's going to be a disappointment. I do wonder if that's something they could fix in the, in the firmware update. Um, let me just make sure that rumble is turned on in my switch settings. So that could also be could be an operator error thing. No, rumble's turned on. Yeah. Yeah, but there is no rumble right now, so okay. Alright. Well, that's unfortunate. Yeah, and I do have this rumble pack. This rumble pack uh, was working uh, when I was when I did the review on this controller, so yeah. You'd think it would work on this adapter too, but I guess apparently not. Well, anyway, let's go ahead and uh, test the the sensitivity. So I'm just gonna 
push very slightly. Yeah, it seems like it's pretty pretty sensitive on this controller. Yeah, it seems like there's pretty much a zero dead zone, so that's good. Yeah, and as far as just like running around, it feels uh, yeah, it feels pretty good. It feels like a regular Nintendo 64. So yeah, that's great. I feel like I'm able to do all my little tricks here. Cool. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let's see, I'm gonna uh, actually um, let's go ahead and try out the original Nintendo 64 controller. See how that goes. So let's see. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the home button, and then we'll go into controllers. And we'll just kind of change the order here. Okay, so now I'm using the original Nintendo 64 controller. You can see. Um, and actually, you know what? I am kind of curious. I'm going to try plugging in the rumble pack to this controller. Uh, let's see if we can get some rumble out of this one. So, yeah. I'm just going to kind of think that there just isn't rumble on this, but I guess we'll find out. All right. <laughs> well, all right. So I can tell you, yeah. Well, so you see, he was, he kind of moves by himself even when I'm not moving the control stick, but. I think I don't think that's necessarily this adapter's fault. I think this is just because this original controller I have is has a pretty loose stick. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it feels pretty good though. Yeah, yeah I don't really have any complaints uh, about the adapter anyway. But yeah, once again, uh, Rumble is not working though. So, yeah, I guess it's possible the batteries of this um, Rumble pack have died, but doubt it <laughs> uh, <clears throat> well anyway so now oh yeah see you know Mario's walking again but I yeah I'm pretty sure that's just this stick that's just a little loose so I don't know I, I actually didn't see that happen on the Nintendo 64 so maybe that's something to keep in mind if you get this adapter if you have a loose stick then it it might start reading directions <laughs> unintentionally um, but yeah anyway now I'm gonna just for a good measure uh, I'm just going to try out the original Nintendo 64 uh, Switch Online controller. So yeah, so let's um, hit the home button here one more time. Oh, let's see. There we go. Okay, and then I'll have to go back into... Oh, actually this one's already connected. Yeah, and I felt the rumble on this when it connected, so I'm going to just make sure it's first player here. Yeah, rumble's working now on this controller, so... Yep, yeah, Rumble's working. Okay, cool. Well, I guess one thing we could test real quick with the Rumble is, um, I actually, this is a very interesting thing. Oh, by the way, I'm just feeling this, yeah. The yeah, the sensitivity, I say the sen there's a little bit more sensitivity on this uh, Nintendo Switch Online controller, um, but not much. And and again, I don't, I don't necessarily think that that's a, the adapter's fault. Um, I think that's more of just the this Nintendo Switch Online controller is pretty awesome. Um, but yeah, but don't get me wrong, the Techno Game, if you saw my review on that, the Techno Game controller is maybe the second best option. <laughs> I'm really surprised on the really surprised on the quality of it. Um, but anyway. Yeah, I guess one thing we could try just to because we know that Rumble for sure is working right now with this controller connected. So what I'm thinking is, uh, <laughs> this will be a very interesting way to connect this. Um, what I'm thinking is let's go ahead and I have this uh, blue retro adapter. And so uh, let's actually connect one of these to this adapter. And then that should let us um, connect the Nintendo Switch Online controller <laughs> to this adapter. So we'll see if we can still get Rumble to work. See, so I'm just going to connect that there. Yeah, you can already see that it's sensing as a uh, controller is connected. And then, yeah, um, I'm just going to you know, resync this Nintendo Switch Online controller to the Blue Retro adapter. Okay, there we go. Okay, there we go. Now it has his first player. So yeah, it's working. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so there is something weird going on with this. Uh, Blue retro adapter plugged into this hyperconnect controller. Yeah, it's uh, I don't know what's I'm not sure what's going on, but it's uh, yeah, it's just kind of like moving by itself. So I don't know. It's almost it almost kind of reminds me of the wow. Yeah, and Mario like hardly jumps at all. 
So yeah, it's it's receiving some sort of uh, input. <clears throat> and I don't know, maybe it's maybe it's this original Intel Switch controller <clears throat> or Intel 64 controller. Yeah, and also the camera is kind of moving over as well. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure this isn't the intended use case, <laughs> and I'm not sure why you would want to do this anyway. But yeah, I'm just gonna try to unplug it, and then I'm gonna plug it back in and see if we can get it to work a little bit better. Yeah, I mostly just wanted to test the rumble on this, but let's see. Now I'm not able to get, you know, I'm gonna pause the video while I figure this out. Yeah, so actually I'm not able to get anything to show up at all right now, so. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Anyway, it, it seemed like the rumble wasn't working anyway when I was kind of jumping around. Uh, granted, I wasn't doing like a ground pound or anything, but yeah. Um, yeah, I guess what I could do is I'll just, I'll turn on my, just for sanity check, I'm going to test the rumble on my Nintendo 64 just to make sure the rumble pack's working on there, and if it doesn't, still doesn't work on this adapter, then yeah, we'll just assume that the rumble is not, the, this adapter just doesn't have rumble, so yeah, hold on. Okay, yeah, I just tested out the rumble on the real Nintendo 64, and yeah, it is working with the rumble pack, so yeah, we'll just say that rumble is not working on this controller. Um, yeah, and apparently, at least the blue retro adapter I have, uh, the retro scalar one, uh, that's the company that makes it. Um, yeah, that was kind of working before and now it's not working at all with this adapter so anyway I think it's pretty safe to say that the rumble is just not working but yeah but as far as like non rumble stuff yet yeah, it seems to perform pretty well so yeah I think that is something oh man yeah I mean so far this this adapter it's it's pretty good it's uh, yeah I just I really wish that the rumble was working yeah so anyway let's uh, let's go ahead and try out um, another uh, game here. So let's hit the select button on this adapter. Okay, and we'll go to select the tiles. Oh, it made that noise as if I was... I think it usually makes that if you're using an Intel 64 controller, but I don't think I have Intel 64 controller connected right now, so okay, well, whatever. <laughs> Alright, so anyway, let's uh, go ahead and test out Mario Kart. And I'll probably have to resync this original Nintendo 64 controller, the Nintendo Switch Online, since I uh, unsynced it before, so yeah, let me go do that real quick. I'm just going to do this one as first player, then we'll make the Intel Switch Online Nintendo 64 controller second player. And then for third player, we'll go ahead and connect the original Intel 64 controller to this uh, Hyperkin adapter, just like that. Okay. And then for fourth player, once again, we'll do our uh, Intel Switch Pro controller. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, so I, I also like to test out Mario Kart because um, just to see like how left and right controls do. Oh, whoops, let's go into fourth player. Test out all the different controllers at the same time. on all those controllers. Okay, we'll just, uh, let's just go into this place, I guess. I'll just kind of drive around a little bit and see how the how the handling feels. Okay, so right now I'm using the um, the Techno Game third-party controller with the Hyperkin adapter. Yeah, it feels yeah, it feels pretty good. Yeah, I feel like there's pretty good uh, sensitivity. You can see I can make little fine adjustments and it doesn't like, you know, go crazy. Like if you saw the Brawler 64 video I did too. Um, yeah, <laughs> that controller has a pretty big dead zone and then it has the sensitivity is kind of off. <clears throat> but yeah, anyway, now let's use the uh, original Nintendo 64 controller, the Nintendo one. Let's see. Okay. So yeah, I mean, besides the stick being pretty loose, yeah, it feels like it, it's handling pretty good, so. Yeah, cool. Yeah, so so far so good. Now let's just kind of uh, compare it to uh, now I'll use the Intel Switch Online controller. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you can get these Intel Switch Online controllers, 
I definitely recommend them. I, 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 yeah, I'm really impressed with the the build quality of this uh, official Nintendo controller. But, but yeah, but like I said before, the the Techno Game controllers they're not quite as good, but they're not too far behind either. So anyway, and then just for comparison's sake, we'll just do the Nintendo Switch Pro controller. Let's see what that feels like. I should also expect this to be pretty good. Yeah, there's definitely a bit more of a dead zone on this Nintendo Switch Pro controller <laughs> compared to a 64 controller. Yeah, it's not bad though. There's still you can still do fine movements. You just have to get past that dead zone. So, yeah. Anyway, but yeah, as far as uh, the dead zone on the the Hyperkin controller, yeah, it feels like it's basically has zero dead zone almost, um, which is consistent with what you get on the original hardware in 64. So. Um, yeah, besides the rumble not working, I feel like uh, this is a pretty good a little adapter for using original 64 controllers on this. So, yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be cool if it also worked with the retro, um, the, red, the blue retro adapter, but yeah, who knows, maybe it's just the specific blue retro adapter I have that doesn't like that much, but... <clears throat> yeah, I wonder why it wouldn't be working because it is just going in. I don't know. I'll have to play around with that a bit more, but it'd be cool if it did work because then you could use that to connect all sorts of different controllers to your <laughs> Nintendo Switch uh, via the Nintendo 64 port. So yeah. Anyway, yeah, it feels yeah, it feels really good though using this uh, adapter so far. Um, <clears throat> I guess uh, the one last thing that I'll check real quick is I'm. Whoops. To push the minus button, not the uh, home button. Yeah, let's uh, let's just do a game where you have to aim a little bit. Um, let's see here. Oh, let's do Zelda, I guess. Yeah, I just want to see what the aiming feels like to see if it's still is pretty sensitive. Yeah, I'll I'll contact Hyperkin too. Uh, maybe they can push out an update where uh, <clears throat> they can add Rumble support. So let's go up here. Yeah, let's just see what the aiming feels like. Yeah, yeah, it feels pretty good. Yeah, it feels, uh, yeah, it feels pretty good. Yeah, don't really have any too many complaints here. Yeah, I feel like I can make uh, fine movements and stuff. Yeah, yeah, and there's like pretty much zero dead zone as well. Yeah, nice. And you can also go faster from side to side or up and down or whatever if you need to. Yeah, yeah, it feels pretty good as far as sensitivity. Uh, I guess one other thing we can do, just to double check, I'm just interested to see what the, um, how the sticks register on here, so if we go down to the control stick, um, settings here, let's see here, uh, yeah, I think it's this one, yeah, on this one. Oh, well, I guess we can test this. I think we already did, but yeah, so just to see what all the buttons do. Yeah, so it's it's basically what I what I was saying before. Let's see, where's that control stick? Control, uh, let's see here. I'm trying to remember. Let's see. Okay, let me pause the video while I find it. Okay, here we go. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to hold the direction on here just to see what kind of... Yeah. Yeah, so I guess this isn't completely fair because since this is um, a third party controller, I'm not entirely sure how this would fare regularly. But yeah, when I push this a little bit, then it kind of goes like there's not really much room in between a little bit and just going off. Um, <clears throat> yeah, let's, uh, let's go ahead and go back and I'm going to now test the original Intel 64 controller. So it will be interesting because since this stick is so loose, but yeah, so it looks like it's doing the same thing with this. Um, so yeah, it doesn't really, like as soon as you register, and I was kind of feeling this too as I was like moving around. But yeah, as soon as you register, or as soon as it registers like any stick press, um, it just kind of goes off into like, you know, like it, it, it just kind of jumps to, you, you can see it like here's center and then it kind of jumps to one or whatever that would be <laughs> um but yeah whereas like let me go back to the 
So like the original Intel 64 controller, on the other hand, or the Intel switch on my controller, you can see when I push a little bit, you can see there's a lot more fine movement where it doesn't just jump. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to say that is something the Hyperkin uh, adapter is doing, which again isn't the end of the world. At least it's still at least it's still registering at basically zero uh, dead zone. But it is a little unfortunate that it doesn't have this uh, fine precision of you know basically like 0.5 or whatever, where just barely pushing it and it registers. So anyway, and then uh, just for good measure, I'm just interested to see what the the Pro Controller. Yeah, actually, the Pro Controller doesn't isn't really having much of a dead zone either on here. So I wonder if they um, if they artificially added dead zone in the Intel Switch Online uh, app for the Pro Controller. Yeah. Anyway, but yeah. So I guess that is one other downside to this um, Hyperkin adapter is the. Um, yeah, I'll just show it one more time here. Let's push back and then go back into the, this adapter. See, so yeah, I can see when I just barely push, it just kind of jumps instead of doing the fine movement where we saw with the, you know, official controller. But but still not bad. You don't really notice it too much in game. Um, so yeah. Anyway, I would say that this is a pretty good adapter. I would probably recommend it. Um, there's there probably are other options that are better, like um, like for example the the Ralph Net uh, Nintendo 64 to GameCube adapter, if you pair that with the GameCube controller um, adapter for the Switch, or actually I even think they have a RalphNet um, Nintendo 64 to USB adapter, which I think that works with the Rumble too. I'll have to, I'll have to try to get my hands on one of those and uh, test it out because that might be the, the best solution. But, but yeah, it's just as far as something is, you know, just getting something working on the Switch, um, yeah, I, I feel like this is, this is a pretty good solution. So yeah, yeah, I don't really have any, uh, complaints really. So, um, at least any major complaints, I guess my, my, the two things I wish that they would change and maybe they can fix it is I, I'll email them about it, but hopefully they can add rumble or if there isn't a way to enable rumble, then maybe they can tell me how to do it. And if I can figure it out, then I'll do an update video. Um, so yeah, rumble, and then also just the fine sensitivity where it's like close to zero movement. Uh, that would be nice too. And maybe they did that on purpose, you know, like so if you have a loose stick, then then doesn't uh, erroneously read a stick press. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but yeah, that is something that, you know, would be nice to have fixed as well. But anyway, yeah, I, I would still say, you know, if you're looking for an easy way to get two controllers hooked up to a Nintendo Switch so you can actually use the real buttons, and I'll just kind of play around while I'm while I'm talking here, but um, but yeah, I mean it, it it actually does work pretty good for that. So yeah, I feel like it's you know you got all the C buttons here, and they you know do as you you'd expect. And yeah, it's yeah it's pretty awesome. So yeah, I, I I would still recommend it if you need a way to connect two Nintendo Switch or Nintendo 64 controllers. Yeah, and the sensitivity isn't bad. You know, it's yeah just not perfect, but. Um, oh, you know, there actually is one more thing I wanted to try, which is just kind of a funny test, which I'm almost positive won't work, but <laughs> just test it anyway. So I have um, a memory pack, a controller pack, and I do have an, a Mario Kart 64 save on here, um, if you saw my other video. So I'm just going to try plugging this in, and we'll see if we can get something to show up on um, Mario Kart 64. I'm, I'm kind of thinking... It's not going to work. I'm almost positive it's not, but we'll just test it anyway. And uh, and just to I unplugged the controller by the way because I was plugging in the memory pack. But um, yeah, just to give it a completely fair shot too. We'll even go into the English version since I have the English version of the game on the Intel 64 as well. So let me see. Let me find my English app on here. I think it's this one. Click it down here. I haven't used it for a while apparently. Okay. Yeah, I am very, uh, oh, it's saying that there's a update. Why is it trying to update? I just want to start it. Oh, it's forced me to update it. Okay, <laughs> let me pause the video while this updates. Okay, there we go. I finally finished updating. Yeah, that was funny. Apparently it's been so long since I played that I didn't even 
Um, yeah, there's a mandatory update. Okay, and then also I'm going to hold, try holding down start just to see if we can get it to go into the memory card screen, which I am pretty sure that they disabled, but yeah, we'll try it anyway. So I'm going to hold down start on the 64 controller and then we'll open this up with a... I'd be surprised if it goes... Yeah, they disabled the memory card screen, which makes sense. <clears throat> yeah, like I said, I'd be very surprised. Although pleasantly surprised, but I would be very surprised if the ghost data is working. Yeah, there's no ghost data. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Okay, well, that's fine. Um, just to... Yeah. No intense 64 controller pack detected. Yeah, so anyway. <laughs> ghost, ghost data won't work with this adapter, but yeah. That would have been too good to be true, really, if it did work. But anyway, I guess that'll be the end, end of this video. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching, everyone. And, um, yeah, I'll have to do another video, too, because they actually edited this game, like the actual ROM, where they added, like... Anyway, I'll do another video on that. But, yeah, it's not the same game as the original Nintendo 64. Uh, but anyway, yeah, thanks for watching. Yeah, I would recommend this. I'll leave a link to it, to an Amazon affiliate link in the description. Um, yeah, it cost me about 25 bucks. I think it costs 25 bucks on Amazon too. So anyway, yeah, I, I would recommend it just, you know, keep in mind of its limitations and hopefully they can do an up, update on it. Um, yeah, and I'll do an update video if I can, yeah, fix the rumble and the sensitivity uh, a little bit. But yeah, but the sensitivity is overall pretty good. It's just not quite as good as the tail switch online controller. But anyway, yeah, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you later. Bye.